Big things have been happening in Linux and open source this week. We're going to go through some of those things, starting off with some drama. That's right, Linus Torvalds starts off by saying, yeah, no, enough is enough. The last pull was already big. This is too big. It touches on non-bcash FS stuff, and it's not even remotely some kind of regression. At some point, fix something just turns into development, and this is that point. This is in response to Kent, who had said, Hi, Linus, big one this time, referring to a pull request and merge that he had just submitted, and Linus just had enough, as he continues on saying, Nobody saying uses bcashfs and expects it to be stable, so every single user is in an experimental site. The bcashfs patches have become these kinds of lots of development during the release cycles rather than before it to the point where I'm starting to regret merging Bcash FS. Those are big statements made by Linus as he seems very frustrated with the latest merge. If Bcash FS can't work sanely within the normal upstream kernel release schedule, maybe it shouldn't be in the normal upstream kernel. This is getting beyond ridiculous. Signed off by Linus himself. And then we have Kent replying with a universal consensus has been that Bcash FS is definitely more trustworthy than BRT FS and keeps going into why Bcash FS is great, only to be met with Linus's reply of, I'll believe that when there are major distributions that use it and you have lots of varied use but it doesn't even change the issue you aren't fixing a regression you are doing new development to fix some old problem and now you are literally editing non bcash fs files too enough is enough signed off again and if anything makes linus go wild it's trying to fix old problems with new development and that's what's being done here for those of you who aren't familiar bcash fs is the cow file system for linux with an emphasis in reliability and robustness it if it offers these features below, including things like copy on write, replication, encryption, scalability, high performance with low tail latency, and claims it's working and stable. Seems like Linus disagrees, and they have quite the philosophy here, which may be stunted now by Linus. We'll see how all this plays out. But first announced in 2015, it was added to the Linux kernel beginning with 6.7. So fairly recently, as we see here, that's October 31st of 2023. So last year, less than a year old, we are seeing the inevitable fall of BcacheFS and maybe even being dropped from the kernel itself. If you want to read more about BcacheFS and its history, you can on the wiki. I'll put a link in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on this one as we move out of this drama into some exciting news. The Mono Project, an open source implementation of Microsoft.NET framework, as Microsoft is happy to announce that Wine HQ and its organization will be taking over as the maintainers, or as they call them, stewards of the Mono Project. The source code for Mono will remain available, although it will be transferring to what's called Wine Mono here soon on GitLab. It's pretty wild as this is actually being sponsored by Microsoft and comes as a surprising update. As we all know, Wine and Wine HQ, which is a well-known project that allows you to run Windows applications on Linux, Mac OS, or BSD systems because they are POSIX compliant and Wine stands for Wine is not an emulator. I have videos on how to install Wine and what it does. You can check those out on my channel. Wine translates Windows API calls into POSIX calls on the fly. That way you remain performant without the memory penalties that you would pay for different methods such as actually emulating but this is a big win for wine hq as mono software is a platform designed to allow developers to easily access and create cross-platform applications it is an open source implementation of microsoft's .NET framework based on the ecma standards for c sharp and common language runtime so what i can envision is that this is going to help wine become better and of course mono become better as well as this open source implementation of the .NET framework gets worked on by some huge proponents of linux Congrats to Wine for receiving this project. We're moving on to something else coming out of Microsoft. LinkedIn, a subsidiary of Microsoft, has made an announcement. They are adopting Azure Linux as LinkedIn's operating system. A few months ago, we got the announcement that Azure Linux was coming to town, and it looks like some of the Microsoft infrastructure, at least on the LinkedIn side of things, is going over to Azure Linux. As of April 2024, Azure Linux is the operating system running nearly all LinkedIn servers, virtual machines, and containers today. We've migrated most of our our fleet to Azure Linux as a key part of LinkedIn's evolution in building a modern compute stack workload orchestration and ML workload platforms. So what was the need for this change? Well, 
a lot of you might remember the fact that CentOS was deprecated and is the primary driving force for this change. I believe that's why they actually made the Azure Linux distribution as Microsoft did not want to deal with this again in the future and they personally thought that it was important to continue running the same Linux distribution across most of the LinkedIn platform as we had CentOS 7 to provide a stable and predictable environment. However, a new operating system needed to address some key technical challenges, including things like user space, bootstrap time, security updates, modern capabilities, vendor support, firmware updates, and some business requirements. Anyways, with this transition, LinkedIn is now running on their own Linux distribution. Go figure that Linux would actually run Microsoft instead of Windows. Either way, it's cool to see and exciting as Linux remains dominant, definitely in the enterprise server space. And we can tell with decisions made like this for very big companies, which has over 18,500 employees and its revenue is topping $15 billion in 2023. Moving on from Linux running everything, Zed text editor, one of my favorite text editors, and I'm actually going to come up with a video specifically dedicated to Zed after long time use. I really want to cover this, but I don't want to talk about Zed too much. I want to talk about a powerful new tool that has been added to Zed. That's right. You can now use Zed with its own AI. I called Zed AI, and uh, many of you will say that, hey, Zed already had AI. It did, but now there is a more tailored AI that Zed is actually working with Claude from Anthropic. Zed had mastered the text editor, and now since LLMs and AI have come to the scene, Zed thought they'd catch up and offer a free, at least during launch period, AI assisted panel of their own. So definitely want to check this out and try to use this. Is it better than some of the other tools that were offered? I know you could hook up Copilot or Claude and other AI to assist you in Zed, but now we're getting this closer implementation with the code editor. I'll put a link in the description below, but there is this blog post called Introducing Zed AI and speaks more about the actual AI itself. It's says here that we also work with Anthropic to optimize Zed for implementing their new prompt caching beta, leading to the lightning fast responses, even with thousands of lines of code included in the context window while reducing costs. Again, Zed AI is now available. You need to sign in with Zed to access this AI powered assistant panel. And there's a great explanation on how everything works and how to populate and use the AI more efficiently. In this blog post, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check this out. Again, you won't want to miss me going through Zed and talking about how it compares to VS Code and why it's possible that it's going to take over as the best text editor available out there, especially when it comes to coding. You won't want to miss that one. So make sure to subscribe below, hit that like button for me, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.